In the bustling city of Athens, over 2,000 years ago, a young philosopher sat hunched over his parchments, meticulously recording his observations and pondering the deepest questions of reality, knowledge, and logic. Little did he know that the principles he was establishing would one day form the very foundation of the modern computer. His name was Aristotle, and his systematic investigations into the rules of reason and argumentation would have a profound impact on the development of computing centuries later. The evolution of computer science from mathematical logic reached a pivotal moment in the 1930s with two groundbreaking papers, Claude Shannon's A Symbolic Analysis of Switching and Relay Circuits and Alan Turing's On Computable Numbers with an application to the Entscheidungsproblem. At first glance, Shannon's paper appears to be a standard work in electrical engineering, filled with mathematical equations and illustrations of electrical circuits. But what sets it apart is its surprising primary source, a 90-year-old treatise on mathematical philosophy by George Boole, titled The Laws of Thought. This unexpected connection between contemporary engineering and 19th century logic highlights the paper's unique approach and interdisciplinary nature. He was commonly known as a mathematician, but he also considered himself a philosopher continuing Aristotle's legacy, who was widely regarded as having exhausted the subject of logic in his writings. The great philosopher Immanuel Kant commented that, since Aristotle, logic had been unable to take a single step forward and therefore seems to all appearance to be finished and complete. Aristotle argued that the validity of an argument depends solely on its logical structure, not on the specific words used. A classic example is the syllogism, all men are mortal, Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal. The genius of Aristotle lies in the validity of his argument and in its ability to remain independent of the specific terms used. You can replace Socrates with any subject and mortal with any predicate, and the argument remains valid. They represented an ideal standard of reasoning for a hypothetical, flawlessly rational thinker. The set of axioms created by Aristotle from which he derived the rest of his logical system were fairly simple. Aristotle's axiomatic approach had a profound impact on another renowned work, Euclid's Elements. This geometric treatise has been so widely circulated that it's believed to be second only to the Bible in terms of published editions. While Elements is nominally focused on geometry, it evolved into a cornerstone text for teaching rigorous deductive reasoning. Abraham Lincoln reportedly credited his mastery of sound legal argumentation to his study of Euclid. In Euclid's methodology, geometric concepts were primarily conveyed through spatial diagrams, this visual approach to geometry remained the standard for centuries, until the 1630s when René Descartes introduced a revolutionary idea. Descartes demonstrated that geometric principles could be expressed using mathematical formulas, thereby bridging the gap between geometry and algebra and paving the way for analytical geometry. This shift from visual to algebraic representation marked a significant turning point in the history of mathematics, expanding the possibilities for geometric analysis and laying the groundwork for future mathematical innovations. Descartes called his seminal work Discourse on Method and introduced Western mathematicians to what would become the conventional algebraic symbolism. This text was the first to widely promote the use of letters as mathematical shorthand, employing X, Y, and Z to represent unknown quantities and A, B, and C for known values. This system of notation has since become the standard in algebra. A groundbreaking field emerged approximately 30 years after Descartes's time, with Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz independently developing it in parallel. One can say that Leibniz's ideas of a universal language and a machine to process it, as well as his invention of the stepped reckoner, foreshadowed the development of computers. Just as Descartes had modernized Euclidean geometry, Boole sought to modernize Aristotelian logic by introducing a precise algebraic system. When Aristotle wrote that all men are mortal, he replaced the words men and mortal with variables, and the logical words all and are with arithmetical operators. Shannon recognized that Boolean logic could be directly applied to electrical circuit design, which lacked a comprehensive theoretical framework at the time. He observed that the ideal theory for circuit design would mirror the calculus of propositions used in the symbolic study of logic. To demonstrate this connection, Shannon created a straightforward table illustrating the relationship between electrical circuit components and Boolean operations. Shannon's breakthrough can also be seen as the first clear separation between computers' logical and physical layers, 
and while he showed how to map logic onto the physical world, Alan Turing showed how to design computers in the language of mathematical logic. The physical layer of computers has witnessed tremendous advancements, exemplified by the invention of the transistor in 1947 and subsequent significant improvements to Shannon's electrical relays, the primary method for physically implementing Boolean operations. In the following seven decades, the semiconductor industry achieved remarkable progress in making transistors smaller and smaller. Turing's work was part of a lineage tracing back to Gottfried Leibniz the polymath who independently developed calculus alongside Newton. Among Leibniz's numerous contributions to modern thought was his concept of a universal characteristic, a hypothetical language capable of expressing all mathematical and scientific knowledge. Drawing inspiration partly from the 13th century philosopher Ramon Lull, Leibniz envisioned this language as ideographic, similar to Egyptian hieroglyphs, but with symbols representing fundamental concepts in math and science. He believed this language would provide humanity with a tool to amplify human reasoning far beyond optical instruments, such as microscopes and telescopes. Leibniz also conceived of a machine to process this language, which he termed the calculus ratiocinator. While Leibniz never fully realized his vision of a universal language or its associated machine, the first significant attempt to actualize his concept came in 1879. German philosopher Gottlob Frege published his seminal work on logic, Begriffsschrift, which built upon Boole's efforts to refine Aristotelian logic. Frege's system was far more sophisticated, and the predicate logic taught in philosophy and computer science today is only slightly modified from his original formulation. Just as Enlightenment philosophy focused on questions of knowledge, post-Frege philosophy became preoccupied with language. This turned logic into a symbol game played with meaningless tokens according to certain purely syntactic rules. But it turned out that Frege's work unexpectedly revealed flaws in mathematical foundations. Even Euclid's elements, long considered the pinnacle of logical rigor, was found to contain errors. This discovery triggered a crisis in mathematics. If the revered elements had logical gaps, what other mathematical fields might be affected? And what about sciences like physics that relied on mathematics? Formal logic exposed these hidden assumptions, challenging the perceived solidity of mathematical foundations, rebuilding mathematics in a way that satisfied the requirements of completeness and decidability became known as Hilbert's program. In 1889, Giuseppe Piano formulated axioms for arithmetic, and David Hilbert did the same for geometry. During the era of Hilbert's program, logic was marked by a tumultuous cycle of creation and destruction where one logician would construct an elaborate system only for another to dismantle it. The preferred method of destruction involved crafting self-referential, paradoxical statements that exposed inconsistencies in the axioms, such as the liar's paradox, exemplified by the sentence, this sentence is false. If true, the sentence is false, and if false, it is true, creating an endless loop of contradiction. Bertrand Russell, along with his colleague Alfred North Whitehead, made the most ambitious attempt to realize Hilbert's program with the Principia Mathematica, published in three volumes between 1910 and 1913. The work was so meticulous that it took over 300 pages just to prove that 1 plus 1 equals 2. To address Frege's paradox, Russell and Whitehead introduced type theory, a system that divided formal languages into hierarchical levels, where each level could reference those below it, but not its own or higher levels. This approach resolved self-referential paradoxes by effectively prohibiting self-reference. The first major setback came in 1931, when Gödel published his famous incompleteness theorem, proving that any consistent logical system capable of encompassing arithmetic must include true statements that cannot be proven. The decisive blow came when Turing and Alonzo Church independently demonstrated that no algorithm could determine the truth or falsity of an arbitrary mathematical statement. Turing knew that an algorithm is typically specified by a list of rules that a person can follow in a precise mechanical manner, like a recipe in a cookbook. He was able to show that such a person could be limited to a few extremely simple basic actions without changing the final outcome of the computation. He was able to conclude that no algorithm for the Entscheidungsproblem exists. As a byproduct, he found a mathematical model of an all-purpose computing machine. Turing demonstrated that a program could be stored within a computer alongside the data it processes. In today's terms, we would describe this as the invention of the stored program architecture, 
which forms the foundation of most modern computers. He also became part of a covert group at Bletchley Park, located northwest of London, where he contributed to the development of computers crucial for decrypting German codes. His most significant legacy in practical computer design is his blueprint for the ACE, or Automatic Computing Engine. Since the 1940s, computer programming has evolved to become much more advanced. However, one constant remains. It still mainly involves programmers defining rules for computers to adhere to. From a philosophical perspective, we can say that computer programming has continued the tradition of deductive logic, the branch of logic mentioned earlier, which focuses on manipulating symbols according to established formal rules. Today's most promising machine learning techniques rely on neural networks, first developed in the 1940s by Warren McCulloch and Walter Pitts. For many years, neural networks were considered esoteric until they were later integrated with statistical methods, enabling them to improve as they processed more data. Recently, with computers becoming increasingly capable of managing large datasets, these techniques have yielded extraordinary outcomes. In the future, programming is likely to involve exposing neural networks to real-world data and allowing them to learn autonomously. The profound influence of Aristotle's logical system can be traced throughout the evolution of computer science and his observation that arguments are valid or not based on their logical structure set the stage for the development of mathematical logic. One can say that this logical structure forms the backbone of computer processing, where logical operations are performed at the most fundamental level. Thus, Aristotle's work might have been instrumental in shaping the principles that underpin modern computing and has continued to be refined by philosophers and mathematicians over centuries so that technology can push the human race forward.